healthcare is too expensive. Employers are offsetting costs onto their employees. Who will make health benefits affordable for hard-working Americans and their families? You, you will. will. This is the Empowering Plans Podcast, a show dedicated to helping you once again emphasize the benefits in your benefit plan. Now prepare to learn, plan, save, and protect with the FIA Group. Welcome to another episode of our Empowering Plans podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Jen McCormick and I'm joined here with Nick Bonds. Want to say hello, Nick? Hey, Jen. Thank you. And you know what? I'm pretty excited. Thanks for bringing this up as a great topic for us to discuss today. Not only is this something that is super important to the community and the industry and healthcare, but this is actually something that we're going to talk about today that's happened in our very own backyard. And what is it? We're going to talk about a first, a world's first that happened right here in Boston when it comes to transplantations. This has been incredible news and the opportunities and the implications along with potentially some of the concerns that we'll talk about today are something that should be discussed. There should be awareness and visibility on what this could mean for self-funded plans and for employers out there and what they need to potentially be thinking about and preparing for in the future. So what exactly happened? So at the Mass General Hospital right here in Boston, just down the street from our office here at FIA, it was announced over this past week on actually the March 16th that there was the world's first, and I can't say that enough, the world's first <laughs> successful transplant of a genetically edited pig kidney into a 62-year-old man who was actually a local man. I believe he was from Weymouth, Massachusetts, which is also just right down the street. And why is this so impactful? This is the first of its kind when we're talking about xenotransplantations. And this is a huge opportunity for us to see different ways that individuals could potentially receive treatment and comfort and healing when it comes to something that has been a huge problem from a resource perspective in the past. And for this particular individual, he had been living with end-stage renal disease. And I believe this was actually his second transplant. And I know previously for his transplant that he had, it was successful for, I believe, five or so years. And after that kidney started to show signs of failure, this individual needed to go back onto dialysis again and as we're starting to see that science is evolving, technology is evolving, and there have been great advances when it comes to using xenotransportation, particularly when it comes to this kidney, this pig kidney, that this candidate was eligible for this four-hour operation. And from everything that we are being told, I know that it's still early in this, we're about 10 days, two weeks out at this point, but this was successful. And this is going to be the first of hopefully other opportunities where individuals are going to be receiving different types of organs when we're dealing with something so groundbreaking that is so necessary when it comes to our industry because transplants is a really important topic. Not only is it an expensive topic, but it's a life-sustaining measure. And Nick, maybe I'll let you kind of hop in here and talk about this major milestone, why this is so important. I know this is actually something you have discussed in the past, so I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Jen. I think it was in 2021, John Jablon and I did a podcast talking about one of the prior milestones that kind of got us to where this procedure is today. And at that point, it had been a genetically modified pig where they had grown a genetically edited kidney inside the genetically modified pig and had successfully attached the kidney to a human patient. But in that situation, the kidney was basically just attached externally to the patient's leg and the patient themselves were actually brain dead. So there was no chance that the kidney would you know, be a life altering procedure. That was really more the proof of concept that showed that these genetically modified organs grown in pigs could potentially be successfully used in human patients. And it's amazing how far this has come from that, because in that situation, they were able to successfully connect the kidney to a human body. But from what everything we've read about this new procedure with this very successful case, they're actually able to 
fully transplant the kidney into the human patient. The kidney started functioning essentially flawlessly almost immediately upon transplantation. And it's really groundbreaking in a lot of ways. It's sort of difficult to overstate how impactful this could be in the transplant world and the downstream effects that could have on health plans. A few, I think, important numbers to kind of keep in mind, sort of highlighting what the situation is like for transplants in the United States. Each year, there's hundreds of thousands of Americans that need organ transplants, and most of them are stuck waiting five to six years on transplant lists. And a significant portion of those are people waiting specifically for kidneys, people that have renal failure or end-stage renal disease. And those people are typically on dialysis that whole time just to survive, just to stay alive long enough to potentially get an organ. And like you highlighted, Jen, even though a transplant is sort of the gold standard of treatment for something like ESRD, it's still not a silver bullet because the human body always has the potential to respond poorly to the transplant, to reject the transplant. Most transplant patients are forced to take immunosuppressants and anti-rejection medications the whole time after the transplantation just to keep their bodies from rejecting that human organ. In the case of these genetically modified organs, some of the big impacts this could have on just the organ supply chain is one, we can have many, many more organs, a much greater supply of potential organs because you don't have to find a viable human to be willing to give up one of their kidneys. You don't have to wait for organs to become available. If there's a greater supply, it means that more people should be able to get kidneys faster and hopefully cheaper. But also because these are genetically modified, they're able to sort of tailor them more and make sure that the organs in general are more viable and less likely to be rejected in human patients, meaning more of the kidneys that are transplanted will hopefully be viable and successful. So it sort of means that there's a greater percent chance of getting a kidney, one, and that the kidney will actually be a successful transplantation, too. So there's huge implications for, you know, health plans trying to cover transplants, individuals trying to get organs, they'll hopefully not be waiting as long. And it does mean that, you know, the current state of the dialysis industry is probably going to change. I don't know, I feel How like we, we that, teed then? up a lot of topics there. Yeah, you know, and I... <laughs> <laughs> the topic about dialysis, I think, is something that is super interesting because when it comes to looking at claim costs, whether you're your self-funded plan, you're a broker, or you're a staff loss carrier, one of the things that people are often looking for is, is there an individual that needs to be disclosed because they're on dialysis? And dialysis is expensive, and it is frequent, and it's ongoing, and the only way to really eliminate the need for dialysis is a transplant. So when we're talking about increased availability to organs that are potentially viable with more streamlined plantations or transplantations when they're going through this xenotransplantation process, what do you think that's going to do for the dialysis injuries? What do you think that's going to do for individuals that are currently out there thinking, how is this going to impact me from an employer perspective? a plan perspective or the provider perspective? I think I'll start from a plan perspective. And obviously the big potential cost savings there is you know, the potential to completely mitigate the need to pay for dialysis treatments. If a patient can you know, quickly get on a list and quickly receive a kidney transplant and not be stuck on indefinite long-term dialysis, that means that the plan won't be stuck paying for dialysis for nearly as long as they ever have been before. I think it's probably too much to say that dialysis will become completely obsolete. I could see situations where shorter term dialysis is probably still more viable than a full transplant, but that's just the thing though, that the dialysis will hopefully be much more short term. It will hopefully undercut some of the power, the duopoly that controls the entire dialysis industry in this country. It will somewhat undercut their power to push for legislation, forcing you know plans and Medicare to pay higher and higher dialysis prices. It will undercut some of that on the payer side. And the dialysis provider side, like I was saying, it'll mitigate the expense that will be required of health plans. These dialysis providers that have had such a stranglehold on the industry, it will loosen some of their power, which will in turn help reduce prices for 
patients and for health plans. And it's just gonna really open up a lot of possibilities for other organ transplants too. Like the future potential here is kind of hard to fathom, but the idea that we can transplant kidneys grown in genetically modified pigs is sort of the proof of concept for other major organs like hearts and livers. I think it could potentially shake up the entire transplant system and it could have major implications. You know, dialysis and transplants are a big part of Medicare coverage, but they're also a part of the ACA. Like transplantation is sort of a fundamental part of the essential benefits that we always talk about in relation to ACA compliance. And this could completely change how that is structured and how that treatment is designed and how plans have to engage with it. So, Nick, are you suggesting that we all go take a look at our plan documents right now and add xenotransplantation as a covered benefit item? <laughs> I think I can see the appeal. I don't know if I would be quite that hasty. Like, I think we've touched on this a little bit before, but there's a lot of reasons why it's going to be difficult for health plans to cover this right away. Like we've said, this is a groundbreaking moment in this procedure, but it is still very much experimental and investigational. Like you mentioned, Jen, this isn't something that's gotten even FDA approval. I think it was a compassionate use permission right. for them to do this procedure, which means that, you know, this is still generally going to be excluded under a group health plan's E&I language. It's also going to most likely be excluded under your stop loss policies E&I language. Right. Uh, and basically, yeah, there's a lot of downstream hurdles that need to be crossed before you can really implement coverage. Is there anything else you see that I'm missing? I'm trying to think a few steps down the line here. And you know, and that's it. And that's kind of the, the point that I was trying to drive home is that this is exciting and this is groundbreaking and a huge milestone when it comes to improving outcomes for individuals and for those hundreds of thousands of individuals that are sitting on a wait list for a transplant, this is new hope. But under the particular circumstance here in, in Boston, you're right, this was something that was granted under the compassionate use approval by the FDA. And under those circumstances, it was a situation where this was for a single protocol, for a single patient, for a single or for a group of patients. In this case, it was for a single individual because there were serious and life-threatening conditions. And this was a unique and extreme circumstances. So this isn't something that is necessarily easy to overcome or to get granted access for the compassionate use, but something that we should be paying attention to and maybe taking a look at our language right now. And do we have e &I language that would allow for the exception for compassionate use? Is that something for us to consider? And this is also something we should be considering as we're evolving and pondering what the evolution was for transplants and how they were covered under self-funded plans previously. And we saw that there were stop loss carriers that started to offer riders for how transplants would be covered. Maybe that would be something that would be progressing, something we might see or expect to see in the near future. And also there are other things that coincide with transplants and how they're covered under plans, companion care and transportation. In this case, this individual was local to Boston. So those extra fees weren't necessary for this particular case, but maybe that's something we'll see in the future, that MGH in Boston, Massachusetts becomes the hub for those individuals who are needing this type of groundbreaking service or transplant, and people are coming here, and maybe there's new opportunities for what that might look like and what we might start to see, but we should be reviewing all of these things in concert with the different plans and the contracts and I do know, as we sort of wrap up to, that this is definitely something that is exciting for us to consider, but there have been some critics, Nick, when it comes to what this might mean or some concerns when it comes to whether or not this is safe to do or people who might say that they're not open to receiving an edited pygmy from a pig. It might be something they have concerns. Can you talk briefly about maybe some of the concerns or things that people might be thinking through or running through just to know that that is part of the reason why this is still at this point. There's no broad FDA approval about maybe welfare and other certain things that maybe still need to be worked through. One of the other big ethical considerations is the implications of raising pigs specifically to harvest their organs, which I can see the arguments and maybe the 
tension people would have around that as a practice. But realistically, I don't see it as being all that different from harvesting pigs normally for nutrition. And I think that, you know, if there's the chance to save and improve human lives through this process, it's worth exploring. And, you know, this is still, like we said, in relatively early stages, the process is still experimental. The systems that are going to be needed to make it more viable on a broad scale need to be worked out. And I think that we have time to address a lot of those ethical concerns still and make the process, you know, as ethically considerate as possible. But at the end of the day, still, you know, this is a procedure that will improve and save many human lives. And I think it's well worth exploring. I think the other big concern beyond the ethical considerations is more of a medical concern that people have for the potential that, you know, viruses and diseases that are typical to pigs could potentially jump over to humans. And that seems to have been largely addressed or mitigated by the genetic modification of these pigs. And it seems that that you know, avenue of possibility is pretty well foreclosed by the genetic modification. But then again, you kind of circle back to the yeah. potential ethical considerations there. So I think I would ultimately stress that this has such potential to be such a big game changer for so many people that it's worth putting in the effort to, you know, address all of these concerns and make as many people feel as at ease with this process as possible. Thank you, Nick. And I think you're absolutely right, is that this is something we have to pay attention to. And I saw some stats from Harvard that said that there were 36 million people in the United States alone who are impacted by chronic kidney disease. So this has a large opportunity to provide relief and impact and improved health outcomes for so, so many. So with all of that awareness and paying attention, I think it brings a, a little bit of hope to maybe people who didn't previously have that hope in creating new avenues and new opportunities for ways that we can advance medicine and provide new treatments. So in closing, is there anything else that you wanted to add, Nick, before we call it a podcast? No, I think we did cover a lot of ground there. I would just stress that if you do have any questions about this, if you want us to look at your plan documents or your stop loss policies to see what kind of issues might be present to trying to cover something like this sort of xenotransplantation or other procedures specifically, reach out to us at PGC. We're happy to take a look and help however we can. Awesome. Thank you so much. And from myself and the FIAT team and Nick, Thanks for joining us for another episode of our Empowering Plans podcast.